I'm going to guess we'll find a way to get to 22 million. And but what does that mean for collectives? And what does that mean for the outside NIL things? Nobody's really sure. And so that's where everyone's taking a wait and see approach from number one. And I'll just give you the Iowa State version. How much money can we raise up to that 22 million? Because obviously, the more you raise, the more competitive you're going to be. Number two, how does Title IX fit into this? It's still a, a question. Does it have to be equal? Um, there's differing thoughts on that matter. And if it doesn't, then how do you break up that 22 million? Is it based on revenue brought in? You know, college football brings in roughly 80% of the funds for an athletic mm -hmm. department. Do you split that up then 80% college football, 15% men's basketball, 5% women's basketball? Do you give anything to the Olympic sports? Nobody really knows these things yet. And so that's, those are the questions that are being asked. And then the other part of that lawsuit is potentially they're not going to outlaw collectives, but collectives will almost morph more into what are, I would say, our marketing agencies in that there's going to be a clearinghouse through some new entity with the NCAA that has to approve all NIL deals that aren't through the school. Therefore, you can't just go to a car dealership, show up for an hour and get a million dollars. There has to be fair market value for whatever that uh, appearance is. And so there's gonna be more checks and balances will hopefully eliminate some of the reckless, you know, pay to play from the boosters and mm -hmm. thus almost be a salary cap in place. But there's so many, there's so many layers to get there. I talked to some colleagues in this space who they think their schools are gonna max out the 22 million but then still have upwards of five to 10 million through their collective through these other NIL deals. And so no, even if there is a cap at 22, your big schools are still gonna try and push the envelope higher because they can. And so for Iowa State, we're trying to figure out, all right, we need to be competitive. We can't just find $20 million. So how does it work? You know, how does the, how do you all work together? Does the athletic department, you know, do they sign these play, players to NIL contracts themselves? Does it go through a third party that facilitates everything? So there's lawyers involved, there's administrators involved, and I'm just, I'm team Iowa State. So whatever Iowa State chooses is the best way to go for Iowa State.